Welcome to this learning session. I am Moncho Tabela Bigel, computer science teacher. We will start by correcting the previous assignment. After reading the questions carefully, you were asked to differentiate between data integrity and data redundancy. So you see here that data integrity refers to the accuracy and the consistency of data, while data redundancy refers to the unnecessary repetition of data. Second exercise, you were asked to explain how an update anomaly can reduce data integrity. You have to recall that update anomaly happen when data is not updated in all the locations where it occurs. And this can cause inconsistency, which will obviously reduce your data integrity. Because remember that data integrity focuses on accuracy and consistency. So if the fact of updating your values causes that not all the locations are updated, it will naturally lead to inconsistency and that will reduce our data integrity. So we are going to continue with normalization and we are going to first of all start by stating the objectives of the lesson. From there we are going to have the prerequisites that are required in order to attain those objectives. We shall have a real-life application of normalization and entity relationship diagram. We are going to present the concepts and we shall have a series of exercises that will help us better understand our lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what an entity in a first, second and third normal form. Also, you should be able to transform an entity that is not respecting the first, second, or third normal form into one respecting these normal forms. So your first objective, like I said, you should be able to explain when an entity is in first, second, or third normal form. And the second one, transform an entity that is not respecting the first, second, and third normal form into one that respects those different normal forms. In order to attain those objectives, you should have notions on relational database concepts, notions on relational database modeling, and notions on producing an ER model. So let's look at this uh, real life application. Ngome produced an ER diagram for a client and was told that his ER diagram was not well structured. Ngome knows all the fields to meet the requirements have been stored and organized into entities and does not know why his ER diagram is not well structured. He is told his ER diagram is not normalized. Ngome turns to you to help him understand the concept of normalization. You are expected to explain what normalization is and how, it, how to identify and correct errors linked to normalization. Recall that normalization is a process of removing anomalies from a database. And as we saw in the previous lesson, we are having three main types of anomalies. We have insertion anomalies, we have deletion anomalies, and we have update anomalies. So normalization has the purpose or the target of normalization is to remove those anomalies from our database and also to reduce data redundancy and improve data integrity or ensure data integrity. Now, for us to move to normalization, it is important to have some knowledge on some concepts. Functional dependency is a relationship that exists between a set of uh, uh, fields that determines other fields. For example, if one value of a group repeat. If one value of a group repeats, so will the other groups repeat when you are having functional dependency. All the fields of an entity depends on a primary key field. When attribute B depends on A, it is said 
that A determines B. So functional dependency is that relationship that exists between two attributes, where one attribute determines another one. And generally, the attribute that determines the other attribute, or better say, the primary key attribute, should determine the non-primary key attribute in your relation or in your table before you can claim that there is functional dependency in your table. So if you look at the table below, you will see that we are having a table made up of a set of uh, fields, name, tell, build code, building address, department, and position, and we are having a list of attributes. What draws our attention is where you see those two circles, which illustrate the functional dependency that exists between those two fields. So if you look at, for example, the field build, building code, build code, you realize that all fields, all fields uh, containing BE must have the building address 1700. So the BE, the building code, determines the building address. So you realize that BE is 17, all the BEs are 17, and all the SEs are 1650. There must be this type of relationship before we can consider that there is functional dependency between different attributes. Types of normal forms. There are three main types of normal forms as we earlier saw. We have the first normal form, the second normal form, and the third normal form. Also, we are having other types of normal form as we saw, where the boy's code, the foot, and the fit normal form. But at this level, we are going to focus on these three normal forms. The first normal form. For a table to be in first normal form, it is important to know that each field should be atomic. When we say each field should be atomic, it means that what? It means that each value stored in a field must be single value. Or each cell should be single value. We should not have more than one value in a particular field. If not, we are going to say that that field is not in first normal form. And also, each entity should have a primary key. So if you look at, for example, this entity relationship, that is this entity diagram, you will see we have an entity called client with a different attribute, name, surname, date of birth, and place of birth. You have to take note that each of these uh, fields here must have atomic values. It means that the name should contain single names, should not be repeated, show name, date of birth, and address. It means that you should not have more than one value stored in each of those different attributes. To transform an entity to first normal form, you must go through the following step. The first, you must choose a primary key. Remember that a primary key is a key that uniquely identifies a record in a table. So you must make sure that you first of all choose your primary key. Then the next thing is that you break down each multi-valued field. Multi-value field means a field that has more than one value in itself. You break it down into components or create a new entity with this multi-value field and create a one-to-one -one many relationship between these entities. Each calculated value should be replaced with fields that are used to derive the calculated value. Transforming a table to first normal form. So look at this. If you have this entity diagram, we have client, we have name, show name, date of birth, address. You will see here that the client ID is our primary key that we have chosen. And now we are having the name, we have the surname, and we have the date of birth, which can contain unique values. But you will realize that address which is a field that may contain multi-values because an address can contain the PO box, it can contain the town, it can contain the phone number. So you see that you can break down that address into other entities in such a way that each of those entities will have unique values. So that is a way you can transform your table from a table that is not in first normal form to a table that is in first normal form. So this table is not in first normal form. This one is in first normal form. We have chosen a primary key field, which is client ID. And after that, we have 
broken down the address field into PO box, town, and phone number. So that is how we can express that table in first normal form. Transforming a table in first normal form. That's another example, you have this table, we have the name, we have teacher's ID, we have age, and we have phone numbers. You will see that age is age is transformed to date of birth, where the date of birth will be able to contain a single value that will enable you to represent your table in first normal form. So you see that you have changed the teacher's uh, entity diagram into one that is normalized by changing the age into date of birth. So also we can create a relationship. You will see here that what that we have the teacher, we have the name, we have the teacher's ID, we have the date of birth, and now we create a relationship. You can own a particular phone number that you will break down also to have what number and the type of network. So instead of you to have phone number, you will have uh, a phone number as a, a separate entity which will be broken down now into different attributes that can have unique values. So that is another way of normalizing or expressing your table in first normal form. Second normal form. The two conditions for an entity to be in second normal form are, it must first of all be in first normal form. Means you must go through the stages to convert a table to first normal form. As we said, we have a primary key, you choose a primary key, then you break down multi-value fields into single-value fields. Or you can even create a separate relation where you are going to have different fields which can only hold unique values. So when you have done that, if for your table to be in second normal form, it must first of all be in first normal form. And now no subset of a composite primary key should determine a field. No subset of a composite primary key should determine a field. It means that if you are having a key field, there should be no field in your table that determines a key field. No. All the non-key fields should be determined by the primary key field of your table. It means that there must be functional dependency between the different fields of your table, between the non-primary key fields or the non-key fields and the primary key in your table. Those are the two most important conditions for a table to be in second normal form. I repeat, the first condition is that it must be in first normal form. And the second condition is that there should be functional dependency between the non-key fields and the primary key field. So if you look at the example, you are having this table, we have class name, we have class number, we have name of student, we have show name, we have date of birth, and we have gender. We want to find out if this table is respecting second normal form, you can observe here that this table does not respect second normal form. First, you realize that these are the composite keys. We have class name, class number, and we have name student. And you will see that one. You will see that there is no functional dependency between those fields. So, transforming an entity to second normal form. To transform now that entity into second normal form, first, we must make sure no subset of a composite primary key can determine a value in a field in a unique way. No subset. So if you look at here, you realize that what you can have what student name, which is a subset of this composite key, can determine student show name, date of birth, and gender. So you see that because of this, where there is there is no functional dependency. And this table cannot be in second normal form. So you should ensure that no subset of composite key should determine any other field. 
Remove fields that promote partial dependency from the list of key fields. Because when a subset of a composite primary key can determine a value in a field, we refer it to it as partial dependency. So you have to remove, uh, you have to remove the fields that promote partial dependency from the list of key fields. Also, you have to remove the fields that are determined by a subset to a new entity and relate the two entities. So when you identify such a field, you do what? You remove the field and put it in another entity and you now create a relationship between the two entities. So you will see in this example, you can observe that here, if you want to transform this table in second normal form, the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to remove name student. We are going to remove name student as the primary key field or as a part of the composite keys of the, the, the table or the entity. So when you remove class uh, name student, which was the problem because name student was determining the other fields in your table of which name student is a subset of the composite keys. So when you remove it, you have made that there is no uh, field that partially, or there is no partial dependency that exists again between the different fields. When you have done that, when you have done that, you will see here that you can now add another field called student code. That will enable you to uniquely identify the student. So you create a primary key field and you remove class name and class number as composite keys. And when you have done that, you will realize that you have been able to express your table in second normal form. So if you want to illustrate it using uh, the uh, relational database, meaning using a table for us to better see what we are referring to. If you are having a table, you are having a table like this one, we are having student name, we are having a matricule, we are having student ID, student name, we have a subject code. We are having subject name. We have telephone. Imagine we have zero one. We have Mary. Subject code, we are having 0796, we have ICT, we are having 6794212, and we have 6949321225, and now here we have 02 Paul, we are having 0795 computer science. We are having seven three nine two four one two two. And right here we are having three. We are having John. And we are having zero zero seven seventy and zero seven nine. We have computer science. We are having seven nine nine three two two one four. So when you look at this table, if you want to see what we are talking about in relational database, you will observe here the first problem that we face here is that we don't have we have multi-value fields. You can see here that 
under the field telephone, we are having two phone numbers that fall in a single cell. And here also you will see that John is having two different subjects that are represented in a, in a block like this one, that is a grouped, group fields. So the fact that we are having group fields and multivalue fields makes this table not to be in first normal form. So for this table to be in first normal form, you must cancel these group fields and these multivalue fields. So by cancelling it, you will see that you can simply, to cancel it, you can simply duplicate this field. You can simply duplicate this field by putting this phone number on a, on a separate on a separate row and you will see that it will become like this. You are now going to have 0, 01 here, Mary 0796 ICT and this. So you see here that we are having this. Also, this group fields can equally be broken down so that we are having separate fields. John, and here we break down this number 7993462179934621. Something like that. So you will see that after breaking down this into separate fields, into separate uh, rows, we have been able to express our table in first normal form. Now, for us to express this table in second normal form, you realize there that student ID and subject code constitute what we call composite keys. And now we find ourselves here that subject code determines subject name, while subject student ID determines student name and telephone number. So you see that in this example, there is partial dependency that exists between these different, these different fields. And since subject code, which is a subset of a list of key fields, that determines some values on this table, we say that this table is not a second normal form. So the best way to do that is to create a separate table, meaning you split this into two different tables. One table made up of student ID, student name, then, and, and that table will be called student. And now another table made up of subject code and subject name. Subject code and subject name. And now, in order for you to create the relationship between table student and table subject, you must add student ID, which is a primary key, in this other table to act as a foreign key. So it is through this foreign key that the relationship will be made between the two tables and you will have moved from your first normal form to your second normal form. So that is another way of seeing normalization. This time around when you are implemented using relational database, meaning making use of tables like this one. So let us look at this exercise to better understand what we have just done. They say, analyze the entity below and state if it is in the first normal or second normal. Then, if necessary, transform it so that it respects the normal forms. So we are having the composite keys. We have product code, we have customer code, we have big command, and we are having quantity board, and we have profit. The table is not in first normal form, so it cannot be in second normal form. 
That's the first remark. This next. The table is not in first normal form because it contains the calculated value profit. So you see here, profit is a calculated value. And when your table contains a calculated value, it, it is not first normal form. So they say replace profit with cost price and selling price of the product. So you will see that instead of us to have profit, we can have the cost price and the selling price. From there, because profit will contain multi-values, because for you to calculate profit, you must have the cost price and the selling price. So it is easier to break down the cost price, the profit as cost price and selling price. Now they say the resultant table is not in second normal form, but it is in first normal form. This is because the field product ID can determine the cost price and the selling price. So when you look at this, the field product code of this field can determine the cost price and the selling price. Why the other fields don't determine cost price and selling price? It means that what there is partial dependence, which shows that the table is not in second normal form. So to make the table to be in second normal form, you bring out a primary key field called sales ID that will uniquely determine the attributes in the table. Second exercise. A table is said to be in first normal form if it respects the following characteristics. A. It must be a composite primary key and all fields should be atomic. B. It must have a primary key and all fields should be atomic. C. It must be in second normal form. D. It must contain a calculated field. The correct answer is B. It must have a primary key and all the fields should be atomic. Second exercise, two attributes A and B are said to be functionally dependent if A for any value of A we have a different value of B, B, A determines B, C, they form a composite primary key, D, A and B describe the same entity. The correct answer is B, A determines B. So you will carry out this exercise to ensure that you have understood the lesson. Explain the difference between first normal form and second normal form. Explain how to transform a table that is not in first normal form into a table that is in first normal form. To prepare this lesson, we went through the following links. You are advised to go through your textbooks in order for you to better understand the lesson. Our next lesson will be the continuation on normalization where we are going to see the third normal form we have come to the end of our lesson Manetambia niña ne injo biayen